Good afternoon from Hopalong Hollow. This is Jerry, and today we're going to use these simple things to build a charming little garden border fence called a wattle fence, which is pretty historical actually. If you think of medieval England or France or even colonial America, these fences were used to either keep livestock in or keep livestock out of the garden. They can be anywhere from one foot to six to seven foot tall. We're going to make a very small one today using rusty rebar, about uh, two and a half feet. I'm going to use 20 of those. You're going to need a hammer. You'll need some sharp pruners and some very sturdy leather gloves. Be sure to put it on your sunscreen and wear your hat. And we will be making a lot of things. So get yourself a stout pair of leather gloves, a really sharp set of pruners, and go find your wood. Because now you're going to go prospecting for possible wattle fences. Here I am looking at a little meadow along the side of our little creek. Possibilities, all kinds of trees here. But a lot of trees just aren't good for wattle because they're brittle, they crack easily, and I'm pretty much going to pass by most of these and settle for this, which I've already gathered. This is locust. Locust is well known for its lethal sharp thorns. As you can see, they're, they're protruding out of every little twig and every branch and every whip. The nice thing about it is they're easily removable with the flick of your thumb with your gloves on. And this is one of the most long-lasting woods that you can use for uh, making a small wattle fence. My second choice here is this wisteria, which I have just pruned off of that pergola right there. Looks a lot better now. This is great because it's so long. It's very ropey. It's very pliable. You can bend it and twist it. And oftentimes it's already twisted for you, making a very interesting little fence. And my third wood I'm going to use is this. This is from a, a walking stick willow. And you can see by the look on that beautiful, curly, wiggly whip there. That's going to make a really interesting fence. Willow is a great thing if you have it. Willow is one of, one of the best besides locusts, but we just don't have an abundance of that here. So I use what I can. But another thing you can use, which is super, uh, are roses. Now when you gather your willow for a small fence, try to get pieces that are whips that are basically new pieces coming out of the tree that's green, that is green wood and I don't want to go any bigger than an inch because this really thick stuff, it's not going to bend. Unless you're going to make a completely straight fence, which we don't want to do in Hopalong Hollowscaping. We want a nice winding, meandering fence. So it's okay if you've got a big end. I'll show you how to work around that. But try to keep yours so that they're more on the slender side and more pliable. And you'll notice I've cleaned all the leaves off of this, but I've left a lot of the side shoots, and that's because I want to use those. I want those to be part of this winding and lovely twisting and turning piece of wattle, and I'll show you how I'm going to do that. So here you see how I've twisted and twined the branches all around each other, giving it more bulk, which is going to help you. You won't have to make as many weave as many of these because you've got a lot more thickness when you do it this way, but I think it just makes it more interesting. And if you have trouble keeping them in place, just get a piece of wire. This is some old rusty fence wire. It'll blend right into the fence. And as you know, I don't think things should be absolutely perfect. In Hopalong Hollowscaping, I love that bit of imperfection. Makes it look more real. We've got quite a mess going on up here. This is my, my manure pile. <laughs> I've got a junk going on everywhere, so this is quite disorganized at the moment. But you can see how I've hammered in my rebar posts. You know what I like about them. They're rusty. They look like wood. They're going to blend right into the fence. But the most important thing is they do not rot away. 
You can be a real purist about this and you can use wooden stakes and I've done that before. Unfortunately, within a few years, they were rotten. And you don't want to put this much work into a fence and then have it just completely spoiled in a very short time. So I'm going along here in this nice little meandering uh, curve up along this slope. And I'm only going to make this about a foot tall. That little fence on that side, that's been up for about three years. So once you have several piles of stripped branches, twigs, whips, then you get to have fun. Then you get to take those and you start weaving them in and out between your rebar, your little posts, just like a basket weave, in and out, in and out, alternating from side to side as you go along. When you run out of a branch, no problem. You just start on the other side, about four inches past, and it will just look like a continuous branch all the way through. So here we have, after about two days of work, a nice little wattle border fence going up this slope. Not only looking charming, but also serving a purpose. The purpose being, on this side, it's containing a perennial garden, and on this side, the side that I was working on, it separates the grass from the little flower border that goes up these steps. Also, it's going to surround this shade garden when I'm finished with it, which may take a while. But it runs around 22 feet. And this little fence should last about two or three years before you have to start replacing some of those vines and locust branches. But if you use um, rebar, you'll never have to replace those. So I hope that you'll take the time to do a little hop along holoscaping of your own in your garden and make yourself a very sweet wattle fence. From Hop Along Hollow, this is Jerry Landers. See you next time in the garden. Thank you.